Hey everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review Hush. So Hush is written and directed by Mike Flanagan. The film is edited by Mike Flanagan as well. And the film is about this woman who lives in the middle of the woods all alone until one night this mysterious killer is out to kill this woman. There's nothing more than honestly what I just described in that brief plot synopsis. So I honestly don't want to really give any more regarding it. So you guys, I do have a guest star with me as you can expect with these hauling reviews. I'm gonna have Real Chase Lee review Hush before I do. So Chase, go ahead and break this movie down. How's it going guys? I'm Chase Lee from pretty much every fucking where from the internet. Um, uh, welcome uh, and uh, thank you Tony for allowing me to be on, uh, as a part of your your uh, Halloween parade of films uh, that you'll be reviewing on your channel and whatnot. We did it last year and it was a lot of fun. So let's do it again this year. So we're here to review Hush. Now, uh, you're probably thinking to yourself, oh my God, it was just like the knockoff to Don't Breathe or oh my God, it's Don't Breathe the knockoff of Hush. No, no, no you're, you're not going crazy, but it is very uh, weird and coincidental that we have two um, home invasion disability movies. <laughs> It's really bad to say it like that, but that's what that's what it is. Don't breathe involves a bunch of kids stealing from um, a, a blind man, blind man's home, and then hush is the opposite. We uh, deal with uh, a lady who is deaf, and she is being uh, terrorized by someone who basically wants to fuck with her, and it's like. You're an asshole, sir. In terms of the writing and directing, the writing itself is very direct. It's very simple. Uh, a girl who is deaf, she is being terrorized by someone, and she has to basically survive the night. From a writing standpoint, from a story standpoint, and characters, it's not, it's not really deep or anything. It's not meant to be deep. It's more of, a, you know, it's there. It's entertaining. It's a fun ride, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think it, it delivers that pretty damn well. And when you look at Mike Flanagan's directing, when, you, when you're when you dealing with... Uh, a main character or uh, you know a villain with a disability uh, like that uh, who has lost a, a sense if you will you have to make sure that uh, one if you are blind then the sound design has to be fucking incredible or if you are like in hush and you are deaf your visuals have to be striking and your editing has to be on point because for the most part, the main character can't really hear anything because we do cut to her POV uh, sometimes in the movies and uh, in the movie and stuff. And it's terrifying because you, you can't hear him. You have to be like on the lookout through your windows and shit. And you're like, you're like you're fucking paranoid the entire time. So I think with uh, Mike Flanagan's directing, I think he completely nails that tension filled uh, atmosphere in terms of the suspense and the terror. It, it kind of bleeds into the atmosphere and you just have, such a fun time watching it and you just kind of get involved within the film like right off the bat like when you realize that she's deaf because you're like i'm just really fascinated to see how she's going to do this and whatnot and so i think for the directing uh, standpoint the tone the atmosphere the mood it's all on point is directed and edited very very well into a very intense thriller uh acting wise the lady that played the deaf chick she's actually mike flanagan's wife and she does a pretty good job i, I really uh, enjoyed her quite a bit she doesn't really speak that much but in the movie her character describes that she uh uh went deaf uh, later on in her her youth to where she knew some words in english and you know through her ears before she went deaf and so that's why she's able to read people's lips very well i think she does a very good job she's very convincing as a uh, a deaf person um and then the uh the home invader if you will the asshole of the movie he does a pretty good job he's very kind of creepy and menacing and stuff and there's a lot of people that try to help her throughout the movie i'm pretty sure you know how that fucking goes um i don't know why i did that it's, it's almost as if like someone's over there like gonna try to fucking murder me okay you'll wait until after the review Okay, that joke was not funny. So, um, going back to the acting, all the supporting cast is fine, to be honest with you, but the main movie focuses on the main chick and the, the home invader, and they both uh, do a good job, uh, very convincingly, that this is actually happening in front of us, and this is not a movie. Uh, Cinematography-wise, once again, you got to be on point with this shit, because... If your main character is deaf, you got to make this movie visually appealing versus like, you know, a movie like Don't Breathe where the character is blind. You got to make this movie really great with sound design and it does a really good job with that as well. But with this one and uh, its visuals, it's at night. So there's a lot of like harsh shadows. 
uh, very, very darkly lit scenes and whatnot. But I think with the camera movements and the uh, editing and how it's cut together, I think it makes for a very creepy type of film. And I think the cinematography really kind of adds to it because there's hardly any lighting in this uh, film because at some point, I'm sure you can probably guess that the power goes off. So we're dealing with a very kind of like dark household at uh, you know one point. And uh, it's just really kind of fascinating to see her rummage through this house and stuff, but still be on the lookout through the windows and whatnot. You don't know if he's like in the house. Like it just, it just it messes with your mind, it fucks with your mind, and just kind of worms its way in there and just fucks it. That little mind worm just fucks your mind. Just fuck you, fuck, fuck. Editing wise, the movie is very, very short. It is an hour and a half. And if you don't get sucked in right away like I did, you probably don't have any hope for this movie. I just gotta be honest with you. But I was hooked in right off the bat, and I think this is a really entertaining thriller that you will definitely love this Halloween uh, season. I'll probably give it a B plus. I think it's a very solid film, but I would go one step above a solid grade um, because I think it's actually that good, and uh, I, I think it actually it competes very, very well with Don't Breathe as the other home invasion disability movie. So thank you, uh, Tony, for allowing me to come back on. If you guys want to subscribe to me and all that shit, I'm sure Tony will put it somewhere. If he wants to put the link on my face, that's fine. The link is just going to be all over my face. Click on that. I do, I do shit online. It's terrible. Thank you, Tony, for allowing me to come on here. Thank you so much, Chase, for reviewing Hush. So Hush is from Mike Flanagan, who did Oculus, a horror film I personally really enjoyed. I think that's a pretty good, solid horror film. I thought Oculus was just so creative, and I, it has me looking forward to what Mike Flanagan could bring to the horror genre. So I was honestly interested in Hush, and I was hoping I would at least find this to be a pretty good movie. And honestly, watching Hush, I wasn't really much of a fan of this film. Now, there isn't like anything remotely awful about this film. It's just that Hush didn't really stick with me like it did for a lot of people, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. I was disappointed with Hush. I appreciated what Mike Flanagan did for this film. I do see the kind of vision he was trying to go for. But personally, I just really couldn't connect to the vision that Mike Flanagan had for this film. However, yes, there are definitely some redeeming qualities is about Hush. Like, first thing, the actress who is played by Kate Siegel, I thought she was really good as this woman who was very deaf. You know, when you're deaf, you can't really hear anything, but she has these senses where she can sense something if she feels something like vibrating. She's really the only good actress in this film, to be perfectly honest, and she's really the only character I actually did care about. I was rooting for this character. I wanted this character to survive because it's all like she doesn't deserve to be in such a dangerous situation. I honestly admire this film for going the ballsy route of having a deaf character because I do know that can be quite a touchy thing to touch on. So I definitely commend this film for doing something like that. And I do think as far as a deaf person goes, they definitely portray deaf very well. The cinematography, just like with your usual Mike Flanagan film, it is absolutely gorgeous. The film looks so great. It really does fit the mood and the overall atmosphere that Hush builds. And Mike Flanagan's direction, he did a really good job directing this film. Even when the script isn't necessarily the best in this film, I thought as far as his direction goes in Hush, I just thought it was very well done. Not to mention, he actually edited his own movie. He actually edited Hush, and I have to say the editing was also really top notch. I had no problem in terms of the way this movie was edited. The first 20 to 25 minutes of Hush, I'm not gonna lie, I was actually getting really into it. I really liked the atmosphere. I really liked the setup, and us getting introduced to this deaf character, and just seeing the stuff that has been going on throughout 
about this setup in the first 20 to 25 minutes, I really dug that honestly. I really was enjoying the film for a little bit. And this film does have some very suspenseful moments that did have me at the edge of my seat. And how quiet it was. I loved how quiet some moments of Hush were. And those were the moments where I felt like this film really did deliver. I thought the score in the film was truly great. And just like what I've been saying, it just fits the overall atmosphere of this movie. But however, I did have major problems with Hush. Now, like I said, I did really enjoy the first 20 to 25 minutes of this movie. And then you have the killer and the moments with the killer were actually really great. But once the killer takes off his mask, once you see his identity, that, starting from that point, that's when Hush honestly was not as good as I thought it was going to be for the first 20 to 25 minutes. Like, it's not still bad or anything. It still had its moments after it went downhill, but I, I just wasn't really getting into the film, and that's just because why would you reveal the identity of the killer early on in the film, first of all? I think this film would have been a lot better if you didn't know who this killer really was until the ending. I think Hush would have been a better movie, honestly, if it just waited until towards the end of the film to really reveal the identity because there would be more of a mystery to it if it was like that. But nope, they just had to reveal the killer early on. It's because of that. I felt like there wasn't as much suspense to Hush. Even the actor that does play the killer, you know, once he does have his mask off, I'm sorry, I did not find him creepy at all. I actually thought he was really forcing his role. I thought he was trying way too hard to be this creepy guy. And I'm not gonna lie, I actually kinda laughed a few times because of how over the top he was. I just personally felt like the actor didn't really do a very good job as the killer. As far as the killer with the mask, yeah, he was really good wearing the mask and trying to go after the woman, but when he has the mask off, starting from that point, I just wasn't really terrified by him anymore. This film is really, really predictable. I called every single thing that happened in this film. And when that happened, I was like, I knew it. And there were some seriously stupid moments. You know those scenes where a character does something dumb and you're all like, oh, why did you go out there? Why are you doing this? There are some smart moments in this film. There are definitely some smart moments, but there are also some seriously stupid moments in Hush where I was just like, oh, come on. Now, I'm not going to give anything away, but let's just say there's a certain character that appears later on in the film, and when you see this certain character, you already know what's going to happen. It was way too predictable, and not only was it predictable, but my god, it was just so stupid. The motivation of the freaking killer, the reason he's out to kill this woman, makes no freaking sense. What kind of motivation was that? That was just so lame. And the motivation of why he's even out to get this woman, that also even took away most of the tension, most of the suspense that Hush was trying to build. The rest of the performances weren't even that good either. Like, this movie does focus mainly on the woman and the killer, but you do get a couple of other characters along the way. And honestly, the acting with the rest of the characters, yeah, they were not exactly the best. I wouldn't say horrible per se, but they were honestly just very, very bland, very mediocre. And of course, you know how this movie is going to end. And once this movie does end with everything that happens, it just ends out of nowhere. It just felt so abrupt. And the whole climax as a whole was very rushed and it definitely was not as intense as it should have because once again, it's way too damn predictable. And honestly, at that point, 
it was repetitive. I was getting tired of watching this film because once it got to a climax, I just felt like I was watching the same old thing like I am with the rest of the film and it wasn't really going anywhere. So overall, you guys, you could probably figure it out by now. I wasn't really a fan of Hush, to be honest. It does look good as far as cinematography goes. Direction is great. Editing is very, very sharp. The performance by Kate Siegel is great. And there are some moments where I was at the edge of my seat. But for the most part, this movie is way too predictable. I didn't feel most of the tension regarding this film. The fact that they revealed the identity of the killer early on in the film really took away a lot of the suspense. The actor that played the killer tries way too hard. And the movie, by the time it gets to the climax, I'm just kind of waiting for it to end. It's not good. It's not good. I think it's fine at best. It could have been a lot better, however. So I'm going to give Hush... Two out of four stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Hush. And I would also love to give a huge thank you to Real Chase Lee for coming here to review Hush. He's a very cool dude, you guys. He has a great channel. He also has a very great podcast called Real Me In. I highly recommend checking out his channel, and I highly recommend his podcast. So if you guys want to check out his channel, I will leave a link in the description down below. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power.